Okay, today we have a Inspiron um, M5010 with a graphics issue. Uh, basically what happens is the GPU gets so hot it desolders itself from the motherboard. What we do to fix that is reflow the GPU with a hot air gun. You can see right here. Let me turn that back on. Okay, first things first, anytime you work on a laptop, you always want to pull the battery out first. Um, then to disassemble, you're going to have to remove all of these screws here. Um, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 screws. Um, and this cover, there's a screw on that, I already unscrewed it. Um, there's a screw under here for your CD-ROM drive, which you're going to want to take out. Um, and I believe that's it as far as screws go um, on the back of this. Make sure you keep them all in order because they are different sizes. Once that's off, um, you can take a small pry tool like this, plastic pry tool, and there's little notches. What I usually try to do is grab a corner while I'm lifting out one of these side ones, and then um, as I go along, you know, just kind of gently pull up and you know, it'll come up. Then you want to pull it forward like that. Then there's a ribbon, so don't pull it up. But there's a clip right here for the ribbon. You just want to pull that up and it'll pop right out. Place that aside. <clears throat> You're gonna have three more ribbons here. This is your power cable. This is, I believe, your mouse pad. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that is, uh, but there's, a, there's three cables. Yeah, this one, this one, and this one here. Just pull them all up like we just did the um, keyboard, and then pull them all with their blue tabs. And that should release this top piece here. And then what you're gonna do is you want to take this pry tool again and get it in between the seams here, and just kind of pull uh, pull apart the plastic there. There's little clips in there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the motherboard. So you're going to want to disconnect um, these two plugs here. Uh, one being for the speaker, this one being for the um, card reader. Uh, you're also going to want to disconnect this. This is a USB um, and VGA ribbon, uh, external VGA. And this is for your monitor. So you're going to want to, this one, pull straight up, just pull that straight up like that. This one pulls straight out, be very careful, there's very tiny pins in here, you don't want to bend them when you either pull it out or especially when you're putting it back on, it's very easy to bend them if you don't line it up properly. So you want to pull that out completely straight and I'm going to put it down to do that. Um, these same thing, just pull them straight out and I'm going to put that down so I can do that. And then you're going to want to take out these three screws here. One, two, oh, actually there's two screws, I'm sorry. I thought there was three. Uh, you're going to take out these two screws right here. What I usually do, so I don't forget where I'm putting these screws because usually there's extra holes around in the same area. I'll usually run a marker right across the screw. I usually grab one that works. So. And 
right across the screw and the uh, board itself. Just so you know exactly where you're supposed to put them. And these could be different sizes. I'm pretty sure they're the same size, but always keep your screws in order. Okay. Now that that's out, um, you're going to have to pull this up over here because it clips into this um, secondary board. And then you're going to pull it out from these little not clips, but there's an actual clip right there. Um, you want to push that forward and then pull it out. Once you do that, it just pulls out just like that. Sticky tape. You can just put that, actually, put that aside. And now you have the motherboard to work on. We're going to remove everything we can off of this, um, you know, as far as the heat sink and fan and the memory modules. Um, there's no plastic coating tape or anything that we need to remove other than that. Two clips. Just pull them out to the side, and this pops up like that. Repeat for the bottom. To remove the heat sink, it's these three screws right here. Don't unscrew one all at once. Um, you know, unscrew, loosen this one, loosen this one, then loosen this one. It, it keeps the pressure off of the chips. Um, you know, it keeps it even. Um, and then this also is going to have to be removed here for uh, the fan and then the fan plug also. Okay, so right now we have the motherboard out, and what we need to do is locate the GPU, which is right here. Um, you're going to notice on all four corners that there are um, globs of glue that are going to have to be removed before we re reflow this. So what you're going to want to do is just take either an X-Acto knife or um, some kind of razor blade and gently, I mean gently, because you don't want to score any of these uh, traces around here. Um, Go around the edge. And just separate it from the chip. So what we're going to be doing on here is using a BGA uh, reflow tip. What this is is um, basically I got these from uh, circuitspecialist.com. Um, they basically fit on the end of the hot air gun and uh, they're the same size as the chip. Um, you know, sometimes you don't have the same exact size. Uh, you want to go a little bigger in that case uh, as long as there's no um, real fragile parts around it. Uh, that's what I'm doing in this case. Uh, that's what they did have the, I did have the exact size, but I don't have a pre-warmer. A preheater for the board so I want the outside to get warm too um, the outside of the chip to get warm uh, a little bit and heat up so it's not so much stress stress on that one area so what I did is I used a little bigger of a, a nozzle I used the 2828 I believe it is yeah the 2828 um, and right now like I said we're gonna let this uh, preheat for about 10 minutes at around 50 degrees Celsius. Then we're going to bump it up to 80 degrees Celsius, uh, which is 176 Fahrenheit. 110 Celsius for 10 minutes, uh, which is 280 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And then we're going to do 215 Celsius for um, about 5 minutes, and that should complete the reflow. One thing I do want to mention too is you want to have 
the nozzle um, about almost an about an inch uh, almost an inch away from the board you don't want it sitting right on top of the board for a few reasons um, you don't want to create too much surface heat and uh, you also don't want um, you want some airflow to be uh, you know in, in between the the hot air gun and um, the board so you don't burn out the air gun and the elements or whatever inside the air gun or overheat it Okay, one thing I did um, want to mention is you're going to run the stuff underneath the chip after you um, take the glue off or you can do it after your first preheat session. Um, I recommend just doing it ahead of time so you don't have to move the board around after it's already uh, warming up. But um, you want to use something like Kester 951, uh, no clean flux. That's my alarm for the first session. So we're going to shut that off and we're going to turn this up. Um, I'm going to go to uh, 80 degrees Celsius, 176 degrees Fahrenheit. Usually these go in increments, so you need to go up to 180. And that's going to be for 10 minutes. Okay, so it was another 10 minute session um, at 180 degrees Fahrenheit, 80 degrees Celsius. Um, we're going to do 110, 110 degrees Celsius. Uh, I'll be bringing it to 230 degrees um, Fahrenheit. Another thing I want to mention is that um, a lot of people that are using this um, Blackjack um, Solder Works BK4050, uh, they wonder what the air pressure is supposed to be on here. I tend to keep the air pressure low. You don't want it too high. Um, if you put it too high, it can stop blowing off these resistors and stuff like that. Um, you definitely don't want that because you'll never get them back on and you probably wouldn't even notice they fell off. Um, I keep it around 66. Seems to be a good even point. Uh, you don't want it too low because, you know, like I said, it's going to be about an inch away from the board. So you need, you know, some air pressure there. But 66 seems like a good place to be. So. Okay, so we're going to go to our last step, which is um, 215 degrees uh, Celsius, uh, 419 degrees Fahrenheit, and this is going to be for uh, four to five minutes. And we just bumped it up to the last um, the 215 degrees Celsius, 420 degrees um, Fahrenheit. Uh, what I'm going to recommend, because you know, different boards use different solder um, that melt at different rates. So what I'm going to recommend on this last part is to take um, some kind of tool just to check if the solder is melted or not, because you're not going to be able to see under the chip, and just see if you can. I mean, very lightly. very lightly um, that was a alarm for the last session so I'm just gonna do a, um, I'm gonna let it cool down slowly I just turned it all the way down so I'm gonna let it um, yeah I don't want to take it right out from underneath the heat but what I was saying was you want to check to see if the if the sod is melted um, so very lightly just nudge the chip and see if it has any give if it starts to move you'll see I mean um, solder is going to be a little tacky so it's not going to slide right off but you'll see if it's able to move and if it is then you're, you're reflowed uh, what you're going to want to do is start cooling down the board at that point
what I did here is I backed it down. Um, you might want to do this in a couple sessions. Um, hopefully soon I'm going to have a, um, a preheat board, uh, a preheat station. It's not in the budget right now, so I don't have one. Um, that's really the ultimate thing what you want to do. I mean, this is great to show you guys because it's a low budget um, way to fix these. Um, not always the best way, but this is the best way with what we have. Um, so what I did is I, I brought this down to uh, 100 degrees um, Fahrenheit. Uh, you can take it down in two sessions, drop it in half, and then drop it down to 100. 100 is as low as this goes, so I'm going to leave it under there for a couple minutes. Then I'm going to shut it off, and we're not going to touch the board for at least a half an hour. Uh, just let it sit there um, and cool to room temperature. I'm waiting for that to, um, to cool off. Uh, you probably want to clean up your CPU and your heat sink, um, get all the stuff off it. I already went ahead and did that, um, as you can see. And these are just thermal pads, so they, I mean, unless you have to replace them, they should be all set. Um, what I use to clean off the thermal paste, works awesome, is acetone, um, nail polish remover. Um, and then put a decent thermal paste on there. Uh, you don't want to use the really cheap stuff because um, that's what causes these heat issues in the first place. So now we have the laptop back together uh, minus the screws on the bottom. Um, you're going to want to wait to put those in um, and make sure we have a successful reflow first. Um, there's no battery in here so I'm just going to hook up this um, power adapter and um, I had to put a different hard drive from a, another computer in here so it's probably going to want to load drivers when this does start so it might be a little slow I have some windows popping up but just to show you that it was successful there you go and you can see um, you can see there's no more pixelation on the screen uh, as far as the words you can read them now this is damage to the screen itself that has nothing to do with the um, the GPU. There you go. Like I said, it's going to be trying to install drivers right now because this drive is out of another um, system. Well, there you have it, another successful uh, reflow. I want to thank circuitspecialist.com. Um, they, they supplied me with the, um, the BGA tips, which worked great, and I also had purchased the um, Blackjack uh, BK4050 um, solder works station, uh, which also works great. It's made me a lot of money. Um, if you have any questions, uh, leave them below. I'll do my best to answer, and uh, subscribe.